Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome uh, to our inaugural AI and Machine Learning for Material Science workshop. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, as uh, the, the Program Director of the Accelerated Materials Development Program uh, to introduce uh, the team and uh, wonderful staff that allowed this workshop to be put together. Let me um, quickly turn here to grab the full list of folks who helped make this possible for you. So first of all, um, the content you're about to see has a lot of hands-on um, uh, learning activities, code. Um, we have also a demo um, uh, data sets. And these wouldn't be possible without a tremendous amount of effort by Chen Xiao and Danny, uh, who are the heavy lifters here. Kedar also put in a significant amount of time. Um, Kedar and Xiaonan, uh, as the deputy directors of the program, uh, are also instrumental in helping to make this happen. We have uh, a bunch of on-site tech support people who are available to help you if you're running into problems with already installed code. And these are Isaac Tian, uh, Zheng Mingang, Adi Maesh, and uh, Li Yinan. Uh, can the folks raise their hands, the folks of on-site tech support, raise your hands um, if you have questions. Okay. Um, we also have uh, Adi and Maesh coming in right now. Can you raise your hands? Hello. If at any point you experience problems running the code on your computer and you've already installed your software, raise your hand in the middle of the workshop. Somebody will come to you. One of these bright people will come to you and help you resolve it on the fly because the hands-on component is very, very important. As we advertised in the run-up to the workshop, we expect everybody to already have this downloaded onto your computer. So if you haven't downloaded the code yet, don't fret, you can follow along with your neighbor. So I'd like everybody to take a moment and introduce yourself to the person to the left and to the right of you, because these will be your friends throughout the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to draw the attention back before we begin discussing weekend plans. I'd also like to thank the speakers today. Um, you'll see... Thank you, Kedar. We'd also like to thank the speakers today who will be introducing themselves, support from Cirque and the Emory leadership, and uh, Ernest for making the uh, content of this workshop and the story of this workshop possible to view for all of your colleagues who couldn't make it today. So, uh, if you are in the room right now and you have questions during the presentations, you can direct your browser to this website, sli.do. It's an online question asking platform. And if you type in the room number Z154, the question appears on this laptop right next to me, right here. And so the speakers will see the question, your question appear in real time here, and we'll try to weave in the response to your question in, uh, as we go. You'll see the demo question, what day of the week is it, uh, that was posed by, by Jatin, who was test driving the platform just a few seconds ago. Um, so again, sli.do and the room number Z154. Let's begin. So the evolution of laboratory research. We, as, um, as researchers and as scientists, engineers, we can easily imagine how artificial intelligence, machine learning is going to impact transportation medical diagnosis, uh, even investment banking, legal discovery, many different fields. But when we reflect the question inward, how will machine learning and artificial intelligence impact our own way of life in the laboratory, often it gets a lot murkier, uh, a lot murkier for us. And what I decided to do was to anchor the discussion today from the scientific method, because that, with all likelihood, is not going to change over the next uh, several decades. So we start by framing a question, searching prior art, formulating a hypothesis, designing and conducting the experiment, obtaining the results, drawing conclusions, and disseminating those results. And many times we have to loop back from the conclusions to the next experiment, or sometimes even to the hypothesis. And as the scientific method has been practiced for the last several thousands of years, humans have been driving the entire scientific method from start to finish. Uh, both the thought going into the input and output, but also the hands in the middle. With the advent of robotics, 
we have seen uh, the robotization or automation of the middle portion of the scientific method, which is the execution and, uh, and, uh, and, and conclusion of the experiment, drawing the conclusions, inferring insight, scientific insight is still in the domain of the human being. And what is interesting now with the advent of machine learning technologies is that one can drive the robotics and drive these self-learning laboratories with machine learning to extend the range of automation so that it's not just executing experiments and obtaining results with humans being the bottleneck and the input and the output side, but this loop can happen uh, where the next experiments can be designed. And there are even folks working on natural language processing to extend this further up into searching prior art and disseminating results on, on the down, downstream side. Most of today's presentations will really focus on how do we execute and analyze experiments more efficiently and how do we design experiments more efficiently. So the big picture, what we are working toward within the AMD program, and I think all of us here in the room have, have some fragment of this vision that we hold ourselves, is we envision a scientific laboratory where the process of materials discovery continues without disruptions, aided by computational power augmenting the human mind and freeing the human mind to perform research closer to the speed of imagination rather than the speed of our resources, addressing societal challenges in market-relevant timeframes. So what is the purpose of the workshop here with you? Well, it's true that specialized materials research and machine learning research is still in the domains of experts, but there's a lot of, shall we say, more accessible, both experimental and, uh, and, and machine learning tools that are available for everybody, right? So in principle, everyone is a scientist. Everybody who's conducted this experiment at home, dropping menthos into Coca-Cola and watching the, the volcano appear, you're a citizen scientist, even if you've never stepped foot in a research laboratory in your life. And likewise, there are a number of tools that are applied machine learning, running basic machine learning code on your computers, making minor modifications, avoiding the common pitfalls that the experts will alert you to. These are all activities that are within your grasp, and hopefully within the next few hours, you will leave here empowered to do this. So today's focus is really about primarily empowerment, empowering you to be able to download this code, run it, observe how straightforward it is, make modifications, and by the end of the hackathon, walk out of here with a feeling of accomplishment, that you have mastered the basics of machine learning code that we've provided. And the second is to celebrate local talent. We often hear about uh, external researchers, uh, external accomplishments, uh, but there's, there are many, many good things happening here within ASTAR. And having attended several international workshops and conferences over the summer focused on the intersection of machine learning and material science, I can really say that ASTAR is poised to be at the forefront of this field. And so we're going to hear about some of the people who are generating code and generating the data sets and, and generating that experimental framework to apply machine learning to uh, the materials research endeavor. So today you'll be empowered to diagnose. That's one of the big areas. It's obtaining results and drawing conclusions. As researchers, we often spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's going wrong, especially with early stage prototypes. And this is an area where machine learning can really help. So if I'm going to take the, 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 those two circled uh, uh, elements in the scientific method and the adjacent ones as well, I'll pull them up here and talk a bit more about what specific tasks we do in the laboratory that relate to those. So number one, we want to identify desired features in the experiment. In other words, we want to identify desired um, properties, outputs, performance parameters of merit in the experiment. And ultimately, we want to simplify the experiment, so we're focusing on the most uh, relevant parameters of merit. Then, when we're doing the experiment, we want to handle missing data and poor labeling. So this is the second portion right over here where handling uh, missing data and poor labeling, this is stuff that happens in the laboratory. Somebody puts their finger over the test tube and rubs off the marker, or maybe we miss a sample, it breaks. Um, how do we handle that in the machine learning context? Lastly, drawing conclusions. Generally, conclusions fall into one of two categories. We want to classify our results. We want to identify root causes of low performance and reliability of our prototypes or our early stage samples. And then we want to identify unexpected results or anomalies. In other words, we want to be able to differentiate them from artifacts and discover something new. So these are generally two classes of activity that happen on the draw conclusions portion. 
And in many cases, we have to loop back several times as we refine our process. And this is called process optimization, at the very top. So now I'm going to take these terms in green that just appeared on the screen, and I'm going to translate them across the silo from material science into machine learning. So we'll see how things are mixed a little bit here and how the nomenclature changes. Okay, so it's the same content, but just refined for the machine learning expert. Defining data for the problem. It's called the missing value imputation or labeling problem. Second, dimensionality reduction. That's a simplification of your data set. Uh, we want to identify the features of interest that relate to the performance parameter of merit or the reliability parameter of merit. These may be bulk and interface properties. These may be process variables, uh, but those are called feature selection. And then ultimately we want to reduce it. We want to simplify the problem. And on the output side, the classification regression fits more in line with, uh, with straightforward problem solving, identifying the root cause of underperformance. And anomaly detection fits more within the realm of discovery, uh, identifying things that we didn't quite expect. So in the machine learning domain, there are several tools and software packages that relate to each of these. These slides will be available uh, for each of you. We'll provide the download link at the end of this uh, presentation uh, by email. And we'll focus on four out of this universe. We'll talk about decision trees as a means of, of dimensionality reduction uh, with a few modifications, gradient boosting method. We will discuss Bayesian inference as a means to extract uh, bulk and interface properties from semiconductor devices, uh, from non-destructive electrical testing. And finally, we'll apply neural networks uh, and convolutional neural networks specifically uh, to an interesting problem as well. And these are but four of a universe of material science uh, relevant machine learning tools that will be discussed in upcoming workshops. So we'll go through them one by one uh, over the course of these recurring workshops. So this is the universe of diagnosis. We don't only really want to diagnose, we want to optimize the process and ultimately we want to discover, right? So in terms of process optimization, there are many different tools available. We'll be discussing two of them, particle swarm optimization and recurrent networks in today's, uh, in today's workshop. Uh, but there are several available here, uh, and uh, with time, we'll be presenting them in our workshops. So ultimately, you can envision uh, a motivation for this whole endeavor, like this little house right here. Faster cycles of learning is our goal. Uh, we achieve that by applying ML and high throughput experimentation to discovery, diagnosis, and process optimization. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand over the microphone uh, to our first speaker, Chen Shao and uh, let him take it from there. <laughs>